this thing to like basically work against black men and it's all been backed by the government. That is not true. Okay, so all right. Uh D Dr. Tia San Johnson, it looks like you wanted to the win. Government you. is your friend, I guess. It's your friend too. I, I want to let Dr. Tia San Johnson jump in. Uh, all I was going to say real quick was uh, that the whole discussion was supposed to be about Black women's ego. And I think when you get to a point where in that discussion, the first place we end up is whether or not Black men have suffered from some mass delusion about what they're going through. And then we transition from that point to getting into this question about whether or not there's any historical basis for Black men being oppressed differently when the, the whole question in the first place has been derailed. And I think this is one of the things that tends to happen, most particularly when you deal with certain types of Black feminism or divestment uh, uh, you know, uh, philosophies. The idea is never about accountability. See, we, we, this, this whole conversation is emblematic of the whole issue in the first place. You cannot correct Black women about this in a particular way where it's actually received. Black men are frustrated and have been for decades because they can't be heard in good faith. This conversation has been derailed about issues that really aren't even sub central to the point. The point was never about whether black men suffer from different points. There's empirical data about that. And if we refuse to look at data, then there's not much to say about it. Yeah, my we're talking, is, we're having a religious let conversation. Me, but just yeah. let, me, let me finish my point. If, if we're going to have a conversation about ego and black women's egos, then let's have it. I mean, that's, I, I'm, I'm actually, you know, curious about that, but I think, you know, part of what we've seen is what black men and women who try to have these conversations on a day-to-day -day basis in their homes, in their classrooms, and I've seen it in my classroom. This is where it goes. It goes into deflection. It goes into gaslighting. It goes into anything but the subject. But here's the contrast, and I'll be quick. The contrast is there's never been a period, and I'm almost 50, where I've not seen black men held accountable. I've not seen black men blamed. I've not seen black men pointed at. I've never. I've not seen black men, you know, subject to hyper criticism even within the black community, published by scholars, read about in classrooms. I've never. I've not seen it. Even. I mean, even Shahrazad Ali pointed out back in the '80s. We don't see that same kind of attention paid to paid to black women. So here we are in 2022 asking the question, and it's being deflected even now. So what does that tell us? Dr. Johnson, would you uh, would you argue that this lack of accountability or willingness to listen right uh, to to their male counterpart is, is is an example or emblematic of of the black female ego? I definitely would make that argument. Yes, absolutely, because black men were forced to listen to it. We listened to it before we knew what it was. I remember eight year old boys dragged to see the color purple. I remember that because I was one of them. I mean, I remember that whole narrative where through media, even through classrooms, you were subject to criticisms about black males contributions or lack thereof in regard to where the status of the community is. But I never once saw that conversation flipped on the other side without it being gaslit and deflected. Can I read one quote? Go 